Hello everyone, it's Kendra Morgan with Cards by Kendra. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am super excited to be a guest designer with Whimsy Stamps this month to feature some of their awesome Halloween products for their big 31 Nights of Halloween celebration. Today I'll be sharing with you this Halloween Slimline Horror Scene card with the products that you see here. This awesome Halloween set is called Halloween Screen and this features the spooky tree and graveyard scene plus a mummy and a zombie, a headstone and some creepy Halloween sentiments. I'm also using the Slimline Film Strip die and the Halloween Word die set plus the Distress Oxide inks you see here and some Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. Now believe it or not, I actually got my inspiration for this card from the scene that's on this can of Mountain Dew. This is one of their limited edition flavors called Voodoo, and I love the colors on this can along with the spooky tree. So I thought it would be fun to try to create a card using these colors for my background and create a horror movie scene since I'm using this film strip die. So let's get started. I've trimmed down a sheet of Bristol Smooth cardstock to three and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inches to use for my panel. I used a sheet of Serio black cardstock for the film strip die. It's 104 pound weight and it's a super dark black cardstock that's nice and sturdy. And I went ahead and cut the film strip die so I would know where to arrange the stamps on the panel to create my scene. I knew I wanted the moonlight to shine over the graveyard and then use the other two window panels on the film strip to have the zombie coming out of the grave and then the mummy running away in the other one. I'm going to be stamping the graveyard scene and the headstone on the background panel and the other images I'll stamp separately here in just a bit but I've placed them where I want them and I'm using my misty stamping platform to stamp these images out using Versafine Claire Nocturne Black ink. This is a brand new ink pad that's very juicy and it stamped a perfect image the very first time but I'm used to stamping things twice but I didn't need to do this at all. So now I'm taking a strip of masking paper and I'm stamping this out again so I can use it to mask off parts of my background to apply the Distress Oxide ink. Now here I wanted to show you a closer up view of the image on the panel that I stamped twice. You might be able to tell that the letters on the headstone are really thick and kind of hard to read. And if you compare it to the image I stamped once on the masking paper, you can see more details on that image that was only stamped once. So I decided to cut another panel and stamp it again just once and I definitely like that much better. So now I'm taking my Fiskar Spring Assist Scissors to fussy cut around the graves in the graveyard to separate the ground from the sky so I can apply my Distress Oxide inks. I had to grab the film strip die cut and place it on top to see where I needed to draw the rest of the ground so it would show from behind the film strip die and then finish cutting it out. Now you'll need both pieces, but I'm going to start with ink blending my sky. So I'm taking the bottom part of the cutout masking piece and placing it on top of the bottom of the panel, and then I trimmed off the excess. I also used a small circle punch to cut out a mask for the top right hand corner for the moon. Now since the moon is my light source, that's where I'm going to start with my ink blending, and this needs to be the lightest shade. So to start, I'm using Salvage Patina, and I'm applying this around the moon using a domed foam applicator. I'm just working this a pretty good ways down over the tree and the graveyard. And then next, I'm applying Prize Ribbon, which is the darker blue. And I'm gonna apply this from right to left, getting darker as I go, making sure to color the rest of the panel all the way up to the mask that's covering the ground. Next, I'm applying black soot, and this time I'm starting on the left-hand side, and then I'm working my way toward the right to create the nighttime sky. And then I just go back in with the other colors to blend them together. Now I'm carefully removing the bottom mask and I've taken my distress sprayer and lightly 
misted some water on top and then dabbed it off with my microfiber towel. This gives it a little bit more interest and makes it look like stars. Now I'm taking my heat tool to dry it and I removed the moon mask and applied the other mask on the top part of my panel so that I could ink blend the ground. There's three little headstones that need to be covered up. So at first I was going to try to cut little rectangles out of some more masking paper. But then I was like, duh, Kendra, you've got them cut out already on the top masking piece. So here I'm just detaching them so I can place them on top while I color the ground. Now I'm using Rustic Wilderness for the majority of the ground. And then around the headstone area where the zombie is going to be crawling out, I decided to add some gathered twigs, which is a brown color. And then I added a little bit more Rustic Wilderness to the left-hand side since it's further away from the moon and I want my grass to be a little bit darker. Now... There's a little bit of a white line above the ground where I'll need to color this in with my Copics. Um, I had to use my reverse tweezers to remove the tiny headstone masks. But now I'm just taking my Copic markers and I'm coloring in the white line along the tops of the headstones using N2, which is a light gray color. And then for the grass, the white line above the grass, I'm using YG63. So next I went in with N6 to color in the darker shadow parts of the headstones and then I used N4 to fill in the sides and I drew lines from each edge working toward the center and then filled it all in and blended it together using N2 and I did the same thing on the smaller headstones. Now because I had applied distress ink over the tree it kind of muted my black ink a little bit. So I decided to place the panel back inside my Misty and I stamped the image again on top just to make it a little bit darker. Next, I took the other piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock that I cut off my panel earlier and I trimmed it down to fit inside my Misty so that I could stamp out my mummy and my zombie. And then I fussy cut those images out. So now I'm going to color the image using my Copic markers. I started with the mummy. And I'm using E30 to color inside the areas where there's not gauze or whatever that stuff's called, mummy wrap. Um, you know what I mean, right? And then I'm taking N2 and just adding that to the shadow areas and the ends of the mummy wrap. And then I colored the rest of it with N0. I wanted to try to keep it white as much as possible. So I used the lightest gray color, but I did want it to have an aged look. And so now that I'm finished with that, I'm going to move on to coloring the zombie. I started with YG25 for the skin, and then I used YG23 for the lighter green shade. I used N3 on his eyelids and the rocks at the bottom and I colored his pants blue using B26 and then B23 for the lighter shade and then for his shirt I used E97 and then E95 for the dirt on the ground I used E37 and E33 and then I filled in the hole on the ground with the darkest shade of neutral gray, which is N10. And then I colored his brain with N4. <laughs> I traced his eyes with N2, and then I also filled in his teeth. But I didn't like the white part between his legs, so instead of trying to cut this out, I just filled it in with black. And then I ran my black marker all around the edge of the zombie to get rid of that white edge, and I did the same thing on the mummy. I've taken a piece of yellow cardstock and cut out a circle for the moon 
Then I placed the sheet of double-sided adhesive on the back and I used the Happy Halloween Word dies to cut three of these out and I layered them to give the sentiment some dimension. Next, I used the gray colored Distress Texture Paste called Grave and I mixed this with some Glow in the Dark Nouveau Crystal Drops in yellow. And once mixed together, I applied this on top of this yellow circle to create a glow in the dark moon for the top corner of my scene. And I set this aside to dry. Now for my card base, I'm taking a sheet of 110 pound Nina Solar White cardstock, and I've cut off four inches so that I'll have a seven by eight and a half inch piece. And I'll score this in half at three and a half inches to have my card base. My panel was just a little bit too long, so I trimmed off about an eighth of an inch so that it wouldn't stick out from underneath the film strip die cut. And before adding the zombie to the panel, I took my YG67 Copic marker and I added some shading underneath the headstone. Now I'm adding some Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to the back of the film strip die cut so that I can attach it to the panel. But I'm leaving the top right hand corner free of glue because I'm going to attach the moon there once the texture paste dries. And then I glued the panel down to the card base. Next, I glued the zombie and the mummy down. And because I added the double-sided adhesive sheets to the back side of those yellow Happy Halloween die cuts before I cut it out, all I have to do for those is just remove the adhesive backing. Makes it a lot easier. And then I attach them onto the panel. Um, I was just trying to figure out placement here. But now that everything is in place, to finish off the card, I'm adding some Nouveau Crystal Drops in Morning Dew to the zombie's brain and the eyes to give it some shine because this dries clear. And then I'm adding the ink pad to the corner to help hold down that moon while it dries on top of that texture paste. So here is the finished card. I really love how this turned out. Let me know what you think of this slimline card in the comments below. For more information on the products seen in this video, click on the links directly below to head over to the Whimsy Stamps website to check it out. I appreciate you so much for spending time with me today. If you're not already a subscriber to my channel, I hope you'll click on that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up to like this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful crafty day. See you again soon.